I play the same shit a lot when I'm like, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm, just because it's like the little, you know, or it could be just that I have a limited vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. Yeah, for me. There's that riff again, the last 20 years. Blink, blonk, blonk. The purpose is not to play, it's to listen to a sound you're creating. Yes, you're absolutely right. Like, yeah. from from four to six, the Here amp just... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's wow, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. That's my jam. Okay, so I'm here at Sweetwater Studios here in the A room with this gorgeous uh, Neve 5088 console. And I wanna do something today with my friends, Tim Pierce and Pete Thorne, uh, where we talk about amps. So what we're gonna do is grab a couple of different amps, different styles, different gain settings. We're gonna mic them up here in the uh, live room bring them through the Neve, and we're gonna talk about different ways to approach setting up an amp for different situations. Uh, Tim and Pete are on their way, and we're gonna throw some amps up and get to work. Okay, so we're almost set up here. We're gonna go through a few different amps. Some of them are well-known, some usual suspects like the, uh, the Deluxe. This is just a normal Deluxe reverb, but it's been put in a head case. Uh, so we've got that. Then we're gonna do the Soldano SLO 100, which I'm very excited about. I don't know much about this amp, so I'm looking forward to Pete kind of taking me through it. And then for our Marshall kind of sound, we're using the uh, the PRS, the HX100, which is basically like Hendrix's. It's a clone of a Hendrix amp. Yeah, yeah, it's like Hendrix's yeah. Plexi, yeah. so so to speak. And I'm actually really excited because I've never played one of those either. Okay, so Tim, when would you go for a Plexi type sound? Well, you can actually get pretty good clean sounds out of it, but. <clears throat> For me, it's like this, anything in the 60s and early 70s. This is the animal. Yeah. It's the sweet kind of distortion. So, And they did a good job. They, they worked really hard and made a lot of amps before they made this one. And the two channels were combined. Okay. So that's a pretty cool thing. It's, it's as if you had, you know, the cable and the two channels were it's, combined. It's pre-jumped. Yep. And we should, we should say, so in, in the Plexi world, the four input Marshall world, why would you jump the channels? Uh, it you can get more bass basically and more gain and this will do that they both work together so uh, Marshalls generally don't have a lot of bass so anytime you can get more it's a good thing for yeah. certain sounds yeah 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 yes I yeah. know that sound <laughs> you see you can actually get clean sounds out of a vintage Marshall and that's yeah. what this is patterned up it's really yeah. Now, maybe some people don't think that's clean. We had the conversation about that, but all my clean sounds are a little dirty. Yeah. So treble volume. Bass volume. So they almost become tone controls, too, which is really cool. And that's clean enough, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's... There's a lot of body. Yeah, what are you looking for when you're doing I'm that? I'm looking for warmth and a sound that when I pick hard, gets really distorted, and when I don't, gets really clean. So I'm not quite there yet. Although when you go to the bridge pickup, then it gets pretty close. Right? Kind of has a crackle to it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I'm in Thin Lizzy, or Humble Pot. That's How do you little... generally set the tone controls on a plexi? Like on on this kind of sound, like with a blended channel plexi? Do well, you... not too high. It's like I there's a point. What I do is I take it to the edge, go past it. So as bright as I can make it without. Okay, so that's a little too much and then dial it right back and it's there. So take it a hair too far and bring it back a bit. Take it a hair too far. Is that and the, the, the treble, yeah, bro. that's the present. Yeah. You're, kind of, you're yeah. kind of almost doing the thing where you listen to the hiss and you can kind of tell without playing. See, that's too ripe for this sound. Maybe it's right. great for something. Take it back to about six and I'm there. Now I go to the treble. Same thing, you don't want it to be too bright. I mean, 
that's a whole career for me. Yeah. I could use that for my whole career. Yeah. I really could. And then what's sweet is you go to the, the neck pickup and you can be clean. And you're right, like if, you're, if you have a truly clean guitar sound, just anemic, it, it almost like a, a going into a PA or something, it might sound good in the room, but in the context of a full mix, you're gonna get absolutely lost and buried. You need a little bit of hair on a good clean sound. Well, you're talking about it's all transient at that point. It just goes peak down, right. up, peak down. And, and you're right, in a track, you need, what this does is that you reach the point where it starts to compress and smooth out right and it's a little dirty if you pick hard you can get more bite out of it but if you pick gently it still has enough compression so you have to turn the amp up it's usually to six or eight right it has to compress a little bit yeah do you find that the distortion distortion that you might hear like in uh solo you know by yourself yeah. kind of disappears in the track a little and it Absolutely. can al it can almost sound like yeah. oh is it clean is it dirty right yeah. is it Right. Yeah. yeah, the hairy edge. And I, th I think we all f search for that s spot between clean and dirty. You know, we want clean and dirty at the same time, and it's actually pretty easy to get what you tune into it. So you wanna you wanna try dialing in something a little more driven, like classic Marshall. Grip. Okay. Well, you should know though that this amp it doesn't get too gainy because yeah. you can't you can't have everything. Yeah. Right. So. What might happen when I turn it up, it might just start to get a little mushy. Right. Let's see. Not bad. So it has that kind of narcotic I call lead sound. But that's all you're going to get out of this. Any good gain pedal will drive it further, but then the noise is going to come up. So I think what you want to do, you want to go to a different amp if you're going to do like modern high gain. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Well, I wonder what happens if you drop the normal channel all the way down. If you were to boost the mid. Come uh, on in. If you. If, Marshall's basically lossy, so it's basically like attenuating when you're turning it down. Right. This is set up the same, and I think it is, Tim, right? Yeah. Like the, it's basically a plexi, right? I mean, it's, it's, you know, you get a little bit of a loose well, bottom end, but. Too. This guitar's a little thinner because it's not the 335 yeah. and the big, you know. Yeah, it does have a little bit of that. Uh, this is a sag to the amp at that level. So yeah. maybe maybe if you wanted a tighter thing, you'd have to back the volume down to eight and then like hit it with a pedal or something, the, the old tube screamer or something the, like the low cut trick, you know? But it sounds cool like this too. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah. It is it is really cool too to immediately hear the difference between Tim's 335 and your Sir. Yeah, pickups yeah. will make a big deal on amps yeah. like this, right, Tim? It's like absolutely. The, the, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can get it to clean, like, well, basically, if I was to do this, it'll work. Like, you know, you get that's the thing. You got the range on the volume. From this. Now we'll see if it'll get into the, the Van Halen mode. What it 
does best is sweet and retro distortion. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Which today is great. <laughs> so it's got switchable brake. Forever it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's a switchable brake cap, right? Yeah. Now it's like, like an early yeah, 70s, right. right? But it'll start to fill in. As you turn this up, it'll start sounding great around probably five or six. Because all you're doing at that point is letting more and more and more and more and more through the pot of the lower frequencies as you're turning it up. Down here, it's high frequencies are getting bypassed completely. But a lot of the magic Marshall thing is when that's, it's a 4700 PF bright cap problem. A bit of a one-trick pony, but it's a great trick at that yeah. point. You know, it's a cool thing right there. It does that? Yeah, it's you know. the one-trick pony that I love the most. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's Hold the sound. On. There it is. Yeah. That's that's it. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, all right, so deluxe reverb. The old standby. This is so trustworthy to me. It's not going to rage. It's not going to put me like on stage with my favorite rock band, but it's going to put me in a room recording with Steely Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to drive it, you know, for a solo, and it, it, it's, it's going to sound like the early 70s. I mean, it really does. So if I want to be Larry Carlton, I'll never be Larry Carlton, but I'll t I can at least get the sound sort of. But it, for me, it's not going to go past that, and I wouldn't expect it to go past that. So it's really kind of warm. And the thing about this amp, it it is going to get a bit pillowy and mushy on the bottom end, mm -hmm. but if you use it and enjoy it. It's okay. It's not gonna have a tight bottom end to me. Exact same thing I do. I mean, yeah, there's a, well, they're okay, they're right there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's very trustworthy. Like if, if I was renting an amp on a stage somewhere, I'd bring my pedal board and ask for a deluxe because I know it's gonna be warm, it's not gonna be too loud. Right. And then check this out. Nothing better than that. Yeah. It still has a nice snap, but you really, really, it's always six with yeah. me. It's always yeah. on six. Right. And then you just adjust depending on the room you're in or the guitar you're using, how much bottom end. And you will you will go too far quickly if you turn it up and use too much bass. You crank down here, but it, it will get a little too diffuse on the bass. It'll open up too much. And that's kind of Fender amps in general totally. do that. And then, but of course, with a single a single uh, coil pickup. Right. It works great. As it stands, and for those out there that don't know, you're like, where'd you get the head? Deluxe reverb, is that a Fender thing? It's like, I think this is a repro cab, right? Yeah. Or like a maybe Mojo. Mojo or something. tone or you something, yeah. Rehoused it. Fender, you should make this. It's yeah. cool. <laughs> In a head. Um, well, yeah, where Tim dialed it up is cool. I mean, it's on eight and four. I would probably, I mean, the way I always think of these things is like, okay, I'm at a gig and they're going to yell at me, so I brought the Deluxe reverb, so it's on <laughs> three or four. And... I'm gonna use it with pedals, right? Right. You know? And it on four and a half, which is about right about where I would, you know. The, the bass, excuse me. The bass is entirely dependent on how hard you're hitting. I mean, you can run it higher. You could run it on five or six if you're playing it this clean. Yeah, it's just that when that when this amp starts to break up, the bass is the first thing that falls apart. Absolutely. on these amps. Exactly. Yeah. I was yeah. going to use the word collapse, but it's mm. not a kind word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you can make it work. And if it's a single coil pickup, then it doesn't necessarily collapse because it really responds better with the single coil. Yeah. Yeah. You have to watch that. Yeah. You got it. All the clean you need, you know, right yeah. there. Really cool right there. Thank you. 
So I, I would set this up like that probably yeah. for many things and then start hitting it with pedals, a compressor for right. sure. Right. And you know, the reverb's beautiful. Okay, but if we turn it up a little bit, let's see what it does and then how that affects things. Go to the humbucker. Yeah, that's awesome. That sounds pretty good. Bring it up a little more. You might need to drop a little bass. I play the same shit a lot when I'm like, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm, just because it's like the little, you know, things when I go okay when I'm well, but it's good because like when you're trying to set up a sound or you're trying to learn a new piece of gear like you want to go somewhere that you're familiar with that you've played a bunch yeah that you know how it sounds or how it should sound or is it's like a it's like one variable that you can control you totally know? Totally. Yeah. Or it could be just that I have a limited vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. Yeah, for me. <laughs> There's that riff again, the last 20 years. Blink, blonk, blonk. Yeah, but it, it <laughs> but is that's how you, oh. it, The purpose is not to play, it's to listen to a sound you're creating. Yes. Yeah. And this is exactly what you said. Yeah. You have to do the familiar thing on, diff on diff different palettes. Yeah, but exactly. That's it. So my riff is always like the. Uh, Range of clean to dirty, and I always play that same thing, yeah. you know, for that, you know. So it's 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 weird, but okay. So now we're gonna move to the Soldano, the SLO 100. Now I'm really curious about this amp. I have very little experience with it, but I've been very curious about it for a long time. I'm actually thinking about buying one for my studio because it does a very very unique thing. Um, so I want these guys, who are both very experienced with this amp, to give me sort of a masterclass. So I want to show you guys a text. This is from JB. That would be Joe Bonamassa, okay? This is a two-page list of the original purchasers of the original SLO 100s around 1987, 1988. And when I found out about this amp, it was like, oh, I have to have that sound. And I, I, I think it maybe took him six months to build me one because they were already really popular, and he was working out of that shop on Melrose. So here's the, the page, so what do we got here? Let me just, we've got Brad Whitford, Steve Lukather, Vivian Campbell, Michael Landau, Steve Stevens, Mark Knopfler, Henry Kaiser, Danny Korchmar, uh, Eric Clapton, C.C. DeVille, and then at the bottom of the page, Tim Pierce. I got number 88050. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Dude. Now, That's this amazing. is a sound that, it, it was unreal. It's, it changed your playing. It was revolutionary when it came out. I had to have it, I waited for it, and once I had it, I was like in heaven for years. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Andy Brower's review of the amp in Guitar World magazine, I think? Because that's the first time I, I had seen it was, that, and it was like, oh my God, look at what's that, snakeskin, the picture of the snakeskin oh, yeah. amp, yeah, and it was, right. it was like, Oh, that sounds amazing. Andy gave it this glowing review. Yeah, uh, I agonized over what color to get. I got red, but it was like, oh, what snakes? Yeah, I got a red one, yeah. Okay, so at uh, a Friedman's shop, he now owns one, and it was Landau's. Okay. So that red one yeah. that's on that list, yeah, is that the, I'll send you a picture of it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Can, yeah, cause it, and it sounds really great. It's well, a there good he is, one, it's number, it says here he's number 13, so. Number 13. Yeah. yeah. So uh, take, me, take me through this amp, Pete. What do we got going on here? Well, uh, should we start on the overdrive side, or should we go yes. to that? Did you? Okay, tell me this. Did you did, did you use channel one very much? No. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it's okay too. You don't ever number one, and just in my opinion, don't want to get above six. Okay. On the on the overdrive channel, or it just turns to mush. So like, there's so much gain in them. There's a lot of gain. This is the first amp, maybe besides you know boogies and stuff of the era, but they had that many gain stages in the front end. So there's plenty of gain from four to six, kind of, you know? EQ-wise, well, let's put everything on five. We'll just see where we go. And then the other thing is, okay, on these modern versions, because this is a new one, which are great, by the way, they put a depth control on it. Right. If you got one back in the day and got what was called, I think probably started in the 90s, the Warren Haynes mod, 
uh, that was a depth circuit that was, I think, fixed. Right. Um, there was no depth knob, but they just put a depth knob on. So this is depth is base in the power amp. Got it. So it's 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 all generated in the power amp, and sometimes you know you run the base up too high in the preamp, and it can flub out and stuff like that on a lot of amps. Well, depth is a way to get some low end out of the amplifier without pushing bass through the preamp, which always in the lo in the lows. When I walked in here, this was on like seven. That would like, well, I'll just show you what that. Set. Let's let's start with it down kind of low, and with the depth on seven. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is like all this Earth subby low end. Yeah. So I, I would never have this above two if yeah. it was me. You can hear all this kind of low end. It almost sounds like low end that you would add on a console. Right. Like in the on the recording console. Right. It's a different kind of bass, you know, than what you get out of the out of the front. So let's let's put that on like one or something. And we'll start with all the tone controls here. Now I've got the amp right now, and the guys in the room in there uh, hopefully will compensate so that I'm not like killing them. Mm -hmm. this, it's a loud amplifier, and it's on two right now. Right. right. Okay, and that's with the overdrive about as high as I would ever have it on like six. Let's right. bring it down to like five. Let's start to bring this up. There's this thing that happens on these where this increases. Five to six, it's really loud. It's 100, right. 100 watts at like, and and it just goes like, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> you wanna do it, Red? Well, yeah, like, so. Yeah. That's my jam. Dude, that is yeah. that is yes, you're is. absolutely right. Like yeah. from from four to six, the Here amp goes, just yeah. yeah. <laughs> This voice goes, ah, there I am. You let me breathe. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh my God. Let's try a different cab. And yeah, see okay. what that's. Uh, this is a good thing. Like, listen how different it's going to sound as soon as we switch to another cab because we got a switcher here. Hopefully, they're getting this in here. You can even hear the hiss change. Yeah. How different. It was the, the smoothest, most singing solo sound ever. Guitar. I love the neck, it's really wide.
like plenty of, like I just dialed it back a little bit. Right. What you're playing sounds really good. Like. <laughs> 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 